Yes, this is a calculator for them. So census calculator is going to our y equals. And now they, they're having this as our fx, and that's going to be our g of x, right? So if we're going to like plug them in, let's just say let y1 equal x over square root of x squared plus 1. Let y2 equal x to the fourth minus x. All right, so let's just plug those in, kind of see what it looks like. Because now, by inspection, do we kind of know which one is above or below? I don't really know, right? I mean, I'm not really sure exactly. So I'm just going to want to type these in. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you guys are uh, using your practice. So that's going to be x divided by, and then we'll have the oops, square root. Jeez. Let's do this again. x divided by. the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, And then y2 is going to be x to the fourth minus x. OK, so looks like we have a nice little region that's bounded by. Um, let's go ahead and zoom in so we can kind of just get a little bit better look at what's going on here. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and hit Enter. Now, it looks like, it looks like it's crossing at 0, 0, correct? Now, should we just assume that it's going to cross at 0, 0? No, we should definitely check it, right? So if we are going to go ahead and check this, so we'll go ahead and do second calc. And we're going to want to intersect, which is option 5. Hit enter first curve, enter second curve. And then let's get a little bit close for the guess. And we're good. We're at 0, 0. Now, I can remember 0, 0, so that's not going to be a problem. Um, for the second one, I'm going to do second calc, intersect. And then let's go to the first curve. So I have first curve, which is above. It's good. Second curve, there you go. And then let's guess. So let's get it a little bit closer so the calculator knows exactly which intersection I am going to find. OK, so hit and enter. All right, now, is that as easy as the number to remember? No. So again, remember, this is a calculator base. So we're going to want to show our value. So if we're going to talk about our points of inflection, I'm sorry, our points of intersection, that's basically going to be here. Um, we could say a couple things. Since we defined them, we could say when y2 is equal to y1. If we didn't define them, we could just say, that's going to be when f of x is equal to g of x. And we can say our points of intersection is going to be at x equals 0. And then also, we could say an x is equal to, now we could write this. Now, at least for the AP, we only need to we have it to one, three decimal places, right? So should we round it or truncate it? 1.18. Truncate would just leave it as 0, or we could round it. Now again, that's going to be a part of our integral though, right? So we're going to want that answer. So if you don't have a calculator that can store it, you're going to want to write everything down. And if you just want to write everything down, that's cool. You can do that too. But we don't really need to write everything down because we can store that, right? So if we hit second quit, we can just hit x store, let's call this alpha a. And there's our answer. So now what we've done is we've taken that second intersection and we validated it. Now, if we, had two inter if we had two x values that we didn't do, before we, once we find each intersection, we'd want to store them as different variables, right? But in this case, we only need to do, um, we only need to do that one, because 0, I think, is pretty easy to remember.
All right, so let's see here. We have f minus g. So let me actually look back at the graph. Which one is above the other one? So it looks like the blue graph, which is our f of x, is above the g of x, right? Because what we know, like, I mean, obviously you could, like, you could graph them, see which how they graph first. But remember, guys, x to the fourth minus x, that's going to be having m behavior that's going to be going up and up. So therefore, that is your uh, y2. So now, before we go ahead and use our calculator, let's plug this in. So we're going to evaluate the integral from 0 to a. And you could say this is going to be from f minus g of d of x. You could write it from 0 to a. Since we've defined these, we could say from y2. I'm sorry, that's y1. y1 minus y2 of d of x. Or we could also just call these f of x and g of x instead of f and g. right? So we can call them our names either way we want to. All right. However, if you remember, though, the reason why I like defining them as y1 and y2, or at least define them that way, because that's at least what I'm going to remind myself in my calculator to do, because it's always top over bottom. So I'm going to prefer to write it or just use this version. So this is y1, so y1 minus y2 dx. And that's basically just what I'm going to type in my calculator. So let's go back into our calculator so I can quit. And I'm going to do math, option 9. Sorry, yes? Why would be y1 minus y2? Because y1 is above y2. When you go and look at your graphs, yeah, I get it. y1 is the top equation, right? Because it's always top, on its bottom, mm -hmm. right? OK. That's what I was saying like in that first example. Like, don't, get don't always think, oh, it's f of x minus g of x, because like, these can be labeled any way that you want them to. I just said you could, you know, sometimes it's like that, but you never know which one's on top and bottom. So it's either you have an idea of what the graph looks like, or you graph them and you physically figure out what is on top and what's on bottom. So now. So we're going to go from 0. Now I stored a. So now I can just use alpha a. And then I'm doing y1. So I'm just going to go to alpha trace y1 minus alpha trace y2. And then again, that is with respect to x. And I get 0.78. And we can say that is going to be 0 0.785.